Come out to play. Look at me. I'm out. I'm out there. I'm way out there. When you're strange, no one remembers your name. Jimmy, I got one name. Get it. When you're strange, when you're strange, when you're strange. Well, hello out there. It's me, Winnie the Pooh. And don't forget to remember to stay tuned to the Riley and Kimmy Show. And don't forget to remember to keep on bouncing, says Tigger. <laughs> and we are bouncing. We are at episode 436. I am your host, Patrick Riley. Isn't he a gorgeous hunk of superhero? Yes. That's exactly what Kimmy says about me every single day, is it not? Mm-hmm. You actually do say that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, she does, and, but she doesn't mean it in the same way that that was meant, I don't think. I think you're actually making, Aww. I think you're making fun no. of me. I no, do. I'm not. You know, I paid you a compliment, and obviously you cannot return the same thing to me by using that sarcastic superhero thing to me. I know you're just being mean to me. No, I'm not. Oh, okay, sure. Well, I was nice to you. Did you see what I posted about you? No, I didn't. You didn't see that? Really? Well, I just hold, woke up. Hold on. That's right. Kimmy does sleep before doing an episode. You stall for a few seconds, and I will get what I posted, okay? Okay. Just, just stall here. And this is behind the scenes kind of moment happening live. Here we go. You just you just keep talking there for a few seconds. I'm going to go get my smartphone. Kimmy's all Gabby there. Hold on just a second. Yes. Wow, you are able to do improv so well. I like that. Okay, since Kimmy uh, did just wake up, let's uh, go here for her. Fastest way I can do that. Here we go. This is what I posted about you. Hmm. Now, let's see if I look okay here. Ah. Okay, go ahead. Read what I wrote. How sweet. Read what I posted. We are going to see the movie Cinderella this weekend, although I see Cinderella anytime Kimmy enters the room. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, I see. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then you you making fun of me. But that's okay. I'm used to that. I grew up with all that uh, ridicule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're You're just like those in my past. Yeah, that's true. Welcome to episode 436. I'm giving her just a rough time here. I'm teasing her. I can get away with it a little bit because, seriously, she does. She just wakes up right before doing the episodes. Mm -hmm. She takes a big dog nap with uh, some of the fur kids, and, well, um, she just woke up. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if you want to see one of the fur kids, uh, just go right to our social media page. Uh, Go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com. I have a a picture of an actual contrast. I have a picture of Lockjaw helping out with dinner. And actually a late dinner. It's one of those things where you're running late and you just, you want things to go a little bit faster. Well, Lockjaw's kind of helping. And by sitting in the entire kitchen, uh, he takes up, you know, a lot of space. He's mm-hmm. over 200 pounds. And what's next to him is his little brother and Rocket, who actually weighs 200 pounds less <laughs> than he does. And I'm being, I'm being serious. And... The two of them are best of buddies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they were helping in, in their own special way. This episode of the Riley and Kimmy Show is a special episode. Now, we did mention, uh, or Kimmy did mention one of the posts that I did about uh, going to see Cinderella. By the way, if you have not uh, checked out all the reviews that are available, we have them all compressed right down to, you know, just a one source. And those are right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. I will state this through the Hollywood Reporter, the... Uh, reviews are very good for this film. I mean, very good. Mm -hmm. And one of Kimmy's favorite movie critics, a lot of people hate him, Rex Reed does like this film. Wow. Yes, he does. Now, I'm not going to spoil the review if that's of interest to you. Uh, You can read what Mr. Reed has to say. And as Kimmy knows, in certain fantasy, sci-fi, horror kind of films... He can be quite vicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can be quite vile, but he is not. He is very, very nice on this film and uh, gives it two thumbs up Hmm. 
if you will. So it's something to check out on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Now, Cinderella's been around for a long time, Kimmy. Mm-hmm. Was there material before the Disney Cinderella or not? I'm going to guess yes. Okay. Was it, When was the first movie made of Cinderella? What year? Um, 50? 1950? The very first Cinderella movie. I'm not talking Disney. The very first Cinderella I, film. You're guessing 1950. Sure. very first Cinderella film was made in 1899 in France. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's been in a lot of things. Matter of fact, Cinderella... Or The Little Glass Slipper, which is its other name, Uh is a European folk tale embodying a myth element of unjust oppression. Written versions of it were first published, it's believed, in 1634 and 1697, and then by the Brothers Grimm in their folk tale collection, Grimm's Fairy Tales, in 1812. Hmm. So, yeah, a lot of versions. Now, with that said... We're going to dust off a version here, which I think very few people know exists. It's part of old time radio. Now, before you hit the snooze button, say, oh, he's going to go down that old dusty path. This is good stuff. This is really good stuff. It's safe for the entire family. Matter of fact, you can play it for any age and it'd be quite enjoyable because this version of old time radio involves and revolves around a master of theater. Now, Kimmy, do you know of a, a person, an actress by the name of Helen Hayes? Mm-hmm. Now, Helen Hayes, actual full name, Helen Hayes MacArthur, was huge. She was an American actress whose career spanned almost 80 years. And she eventually garnered the nickname the First Lady of American Theater and was one of 12 people to have won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony Award. Mm. That's just how big she was. Hayes also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, America's highest civilian honor from President Ronald Reagan back in 1986. In 1988, she was awarded the National Medal of Arts, the annual Helen Hayes Awards, which have recognized excellence in professional theater in the greater Washington, D.C. area since 1984, or her namesake. Her adopted son was a famous actor. Nerds know him, those who are familiar with television, in the 1960s through the 1980s. Do you know who her son was? Mm-mm. Her adopted son? No. James Gordon MacArthur, the actor who played Danny, Dan O, on Hawaii Five O. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And by the way, he passed away in 2010, not that long ago, in Jacksonville, Florida. Wow. I did not know that. That's, that's where he retired to. Now, radio listeners in the golden age of radio loved Helen Hayes. Matter of fact, all of America did at that time period and beyond. Now, one of the era's most beloved performers and personalities, get this, Helen Hayes made over 500 appearances during the golden age of radio. Mm. Now, beginning in 1935, Helen Hayes undertook an almost unbroken run on radio programs over 15 years, hosted by and or starring herself in drama anthologies. Now, we are going to one of these anthologies one of these dramas and one of those just happens to be cinderella Hmm. and this production is of course a little bit different than the disney one that i think everybody knows the animated version yet there will be similarities because the disney one was based on the folklore and there is singing in this one which by the way i i have not found a review yet of the current movie the new movie that criticizes the lack of the songs and things from the Disney uh, previous animated film. So this will kind of go into the, if you miss that, that's in this radio drama is some, some songs and they are beautiful. So if you've never heard this before, even if you know the story of Cinderella, or maybe you have a little one who does not know the story of Cinderella, this is our gift to you. We're going back in time right now, coming to December 29th, 1945. This is Helen Hayes with Cinderella on the Riley and Kimmy Show. This is the Textron Theater. And this is Helen Hayes. Textron, 
maker of finest textile products, through the cooperation of America's great retail stores, presents a radio series of finest plays starring Miss Helen Hayes. And here is Miss Hayes. Thank you. I'm really excited about the play we're doing tonight because it's a wonderful adaptation of probably the best-known story in the world, Cinderella. And we're happy to have Alfred Drake to play and sing the part of the handsome prince. After the program, there will be a special announcement about a series of $500 scholarship prizes for young people. It will be well worth your while to listen to it. And here is Cinderella starring Helen Hayes with Alfred Drake as the prince. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a poor little drudge. Her name was Cinderella. Cinderella, you lazy girl, go fetch the mirror that we may see our beauty. Yes, stepmother. Cinderella, fetch my cape. Yes, Grimalda. Cinderella, fetch my comb. Yes, Maggette. Cinderella, your sisters are waiting. That stupid child, we'll be late for the ball. Cinderella, come down this instant. Hold up the mirror, Cinderella. I'm coming. Hold up the mirror that your sisters can see how they look. Yes, stepmother, but it's so heavy. Do what you're told. Higher, higher. I'm trying. Oh, my hair, this curl won't stay in place. Of course it will. Oh, let me see. Let me have a look in the mirror, too. My arms, my arms hurt. I can't hold the mirror. Lift it higher. Higher. Higher, brat. There. Now let me look. (gasps) Oh, my lips. So pale. Never mind. One second, Mother. I've forgotten to powder. One moment, Mother. I've neglected to paint. Girls, girls, come at once. We must be off to the ball. Hi-ho, time to go, we're off to the prince's ball We'll dine and dance and find romance in a brightly gilded hall We're dressed in fashion a la mode, we're models of propriety At half past eight we'll circulate in the very best society We'll have you know it goes to show our obvious gentility We're far above the high polite who never know the lovely joy of mingling with nobility You must Agree, I'm beautiful to see. I'm sure the prince will soon evince a preference for me. My dear Guamalda, I'll admit your bearing's rather regal. But if I may, I'd like to say you have the beak of an eagle. My dear Baguette, it's plain as day, although your nose is retrousse. So delicate and small, your face was right on curving in until, alas, you have no chin to speak about at all. My dear Guamalda, I'll confess you have a queenly torso. But I must feel you're overweight, tremendous only moist. My dear Maguette, I do not mind admitting you're the puny kind that dancers call a pony. But if the naked truth be said, you look as though you're underfed. You're positively bony. There's no more time for this debate because the hour is getting late. I hope time to go. We're off to the prince's ball. We'll dine and dance and find romance in a brightly gilded hall. We're dressed in fashion a la mode. We're models of propriety. And half the day will circulate in a very best society. We'd have you know it goes to show our obvious gentility. We are distinctly upper crust and so we're off in a cloud of dust to mingle with nobility. <laughs> Oh, the ball is starting. We must be off. Hold up the mirror, Cinderella. I must have one last look. Higher. Hold it higher, girl. Higher. I must see my lips. Oh, please. My arms are so tired. I can't. I can't. Hold it up. Hold it higher. I can't. I can't. Oh, oh. Oh, the mirror. She did it on purpose. Oh, you devil. Seven years of bad luck, wretched girl. (gasps) I'll teach you. Oh, no. Stepmother, don't, don't. Mother, sister, hurry. We'll be late. Yes. Come, Mother. We'll tend to her when we come home. Yes, we'll tend to you, Cinderella, when we get home from the ball. Oh, why did I have to be a stepchild? Why can't I go to the ball and wear a beautiful gown? What if I went and met the handsome prince and let him look into my eyes? Would he know what was in my heart? Would he clasp me in his arms and whirl me off on the ballroom floor? Oh, funny old yellow broom, you be my prince. See, I hold you so, and the music starts, and off we dance. Oh, oh, old broom, did you have to trip me? No, no use, no use pretending, no use dreaming. I'm just a little drudge doomed to watch by the fire. Alone and despairing, I sit by the fire and contemplate unhappy me. 
The patches I'm wearing upon my attire Are not very lovely to see The darns in my stocking are utterly shocking And hardly a subject for glee From sweeping the ashes my cheek has a smudge That only gets worse with rubbing It labels me just what I am, a drudge Whose duties are sweeping and scrubbing I sigh, oh hum Life is so humdrum Oh me, if I could only sleep Then perchance I would dream I'll put my head down and close my eyes. What's that? Oh, I must have been dreaming. I heard the most beautiful music. No, my child, you were not dreaming. You really did hear beautiful music. It is played for me wherever I go. Played by the four winds on a harp brought by the little fairies from an island across the sea. Oh, you're so beautiful, so beautiful. How could I be dreaming when I don't remember falling asleep? Get up, Cinderella, and let me present you to my court. Your court? I see no one else. No, they are invisible, but they are here. Are you not here? Ah, ah yes, we are here. No more till I can see us, but we're always lurking near. Your ever loyal court, we hasten to report. Each one of us affirm it, not to mention willing servant. To execute your wishes is a very special force. Oh, this is the most wonderful thing that ever happened. Who are you? I am your fairy godmother, and it's high time I came along. We can't have a lovely little girl like yourself staying home alone by the fire. It will not do. It will not do at all. It will not do at all. At all it will not do. In fact, we are indignant that fortune so malignant is persecuting you. But I I don't wish to be rude, but I didn't know I had a fairy godmother. One never knows about things like that, my dear. We fairies are funny people. But enough of this chatter. We have things to do, you and I. But, But I can't think of a thing we can do. I can't even serve you supper. Oh, tush, child. We don't eat, save for a drop of honey from a flower at Eastertide. Now, let me see. If you're to go to the ball, you've got to go in style. To the ball? The ball. We're certain one and all A maiden so entrancing Should undoubtedly be dancing at the ball Of course you're going How else can the prince fall in love with you If he doesn't see you Oh, but I couldn't go to the ball Oh, yes you can and you are When I get finished with you You'll be the belle of the ball Now, let's begin at the beginning. What are you going to ride in? Ah, of course, that pumpkin on the window ledge. But I couldn't ride in that. I'd rather stay home. What? No. First, open the door and roll the pumpkin into the street. Roll it up, roll it up, oh, hey, ho. Roll it up, roll it up, to the street we go. There, now watch as I touch yon sad squash with my wand. Abracadabra, abracadabra, hold your hat, here we go. Coach, a gilded coach. A coach, a coach, a coach beyond reproach. In every last particular, a masterpiece particular. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Now for horses to pull the coach. Those six mice in the mouse trap, the very things. Bring them over. Uh, no, pardon me. I forgot how you mortal women feel about mice. I'll go to them. I touch them so. Mumbo jumbo jingle jay. Mumbo jumbo take it away. Beautiful horses. Six beautiful horses, each a beautiful steed. We have it on authority, by ten to one majority, they're highly pedigreed. Now we need a coachman, of course. Do you have a nice pet rat around the house? Oh, yes, my sisters keep him for a pet. They would. Fetch him over. That's it. I touch him and lo. Hocus, pocus, rigmarole. Now you don't see him, now you do. A coachman, a coachman, now what do you think of that? Despite his handsome livery, he sort of makes a shivery to think he was begat. A rat. 
why he looks like Grimalda's bow. Well, you have to do just the same. Now those six fine little lizards sleeping near the heart. Bingo, jingo, hey, little, little, there's the answer to your riddle. And we have six fine footmen in livery. Now you are equipped in style. Well, what's the matter, Cinderella? Aren't you glad? Oh, yes, oh, yes, but... I look so funny sitting in that grand coach in these rags. Rags? Do you say, girl? Nonsense. Stand still and let me touch you. Hickory, dickory, dickory, dot. There you are, a lovely frock. Oh, what's happened? You're as beautiful as a fairy queen. And I can't tell because I broke the mirror. A looking glass you need? I'll summon the mirror surface of the fairy lake and you'll see yourself as beautiful as you are. Hold your bees, wax, barley, breast. Now you have a looking glass. There, child, look your fill. Oh, oh, is it really me? It is. Why, I, I am beautiful. Yes, from the tips of your glass slippers to the pearls in your hair. Glass slippers? Why, they are fit for a princess. Well, I like that. You don't think I did all this to make you into a swineherd, do you? Oh, no, but... If he asks me who I am, what shall I say to the prince? Ah, my child, when he sees you, you won't have to say a word. He'll do all the talking. Now, into your coach and off to the ball. Uh, But wait. Yes, yes, fairy godmother. There's only one thing I must insist on. You must be back here by the fire before the clock finishes the stroke of twelve. If you are not, the horses will turn back into mice, the footman to lizards, the coachman to a rat, the coach to a pumpkin, and you will return to your rags. Understand? Oh, yes, I understand. Before the clock finishes, the stroke of twelve. Hi, ho, time to go. She's off to the prince's ball. She'll dine and dance and find romance in a bright and gilded hall. She's dressed in fashion, a la mode, a model of propriety. In a coach and six, she's off to mix in the very best society. Society, society, in very best society. Society, society. Uh, Royal Highness, you're not dancing. No, Prime Minister, I am not. But surely, Highness, surely, since you ordered this ball yourself, you ought to, uh, to, to circulate. The ambassador from Oz is here, and the Duchess of Dell. She's the sister of a powerful king of Ordinia. There are affairs of state to be discharged, Highness, in whispers behind the royal palms. Prime Minister, you are nothing but a roll of ancient parchment in endless need of a signature. You weary me. <laughs> the Prime Minister is a prune, young Highness. A dried old prune. The Privy Councillor presumes too much. Stop badgering the young prince, sir. Gentlemen, please. Your Highness. Sire. Tell me, Privy Councillor, you are known as a man among women. Are there any here worthy of my choice? Any of these damsels whose sparkling eyes promise more than a selfish passion to sacrifice themselves for favor in my court? Ah. Uh, yes, uh, Privy Councillor, a fair question. You keep out of this, Prime Minister. The only thing you know about women is that they run at your approach, hide when they hear your voice. I have asked you a question, Privy Councillor. So you have, Royal Highness, so you have. Well, now let me see. Ah, there's many a delightful baggage here, many a shape, many a fair head. And if those heady glances were bent my way, sire, it would make me dizzy planning to take advantage of them all. No, no, I have no desire for dalliance. I am lonely. I seek the princess of my dreams to share my throne. Ah, dreams. What have dreams to do with running a state? Let him be. It is good to chase a woman, if only in a dream. The Herald. A new arrival and a late one. Could only be a person of royal blood. Perhaps the Princess of Rondé. That ugly magpie, heaven save us. Her Royal Highness... Ah, I knew it. Her Royal Highness, the Princess of... The Princess. Your Royal Highness, I bid you welcome to our humble hall. Royal Highness, I have not words to thank you. Thank me? By my shield, it is I who need to give thanks... To ransack the kingdom for gifts for you. To order a week of feasting throughout the land. To order my keeper of the vaults to distribute a hundred bags of gold to the beggars. To... To kiss your dear hand in thanksgiving. Oh, my prince. Will you dance with me? Oh, yes, my prince. With you and no one else. Music. And let there be beautiful music. 
my heart is beating like the drum of the god. And mine roaring in my ears like the sound of the sea heard in a shell. How could this be? Only a true miracle could have brought you to me. It was a miracle indeed. You must never leave me. You must swear it. Oh, I... I cannot. Oh, you must. I... I have come to you so many times, dear prince, so many times in my dreams. But I have never come to you like this. I would not care if you came in rags. In rags? I would not care if you came as the lowliest drudge in my kingdom. It is you I love, my dear. You and none other. I swear it on the sainted memory of my mother, the queen. Now you must swear to me. But, my darling, I... I cannot, I cannot... You refuse? Oh, upon my honor, I am a doltish fellow. It is I who must come to you, and I shall. Though a moat wider than the sea lie between... Though twenty dragons breathing fire guard your tower. Though I am but a drudge who must huddle by the fire. Though you are the lowliest pauper in the kingdom. That you swear? That I swear. Oh, my prince, sweet prince. Surely we dream. This is the gossamer stuff of which rainbows are woven. This is the land that lies in the white clouds above the spring. This is the magical kingdom of dreams. This is the land of the heart where one is allowed to hold close the love never realized. Hush. Hush, my fairy princess. Let me kiss each eyelid and you will wake and see this wonderful dream come true shining in my eyes. Oh, I see. I see and I believe and my heart is bursting with the pain of happiness. Oh, the first stroke of midnight. Good night, dear prince. Good night. No, my princess, you cannot go. You must not. Uh, Highness, your royal highness, an affair of state. Confound you, prime minister. I can't be interrupted. Tradition, your highness, is midnight. The royal toast to the kingdom. Yes, but she is... Very well, have your way. Prime minister, the goblet, quickly. The toast, highness, the toast. To the people, to the charter, to the commons, the clergy, and the nobility, to the kingdom, may God guide and save us all. Amen. The hour has struck. I must be home before the clock finishes at strike or I will wander this palace in rags. Oh, to have given me a glimpse of paradise and then to have snatched it away. There it is, the coach. Coachman, quickly, whip the horses. Lights gleam in the castle and the music is gay. Does he watch from the high window? Does his heart lie crushed within him like my poor heart? The clouds and the mists close in, but I can feel his arms still strong around me. I can feel the pulse of his lips against my eyelids. Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. <laughs> uh, she's lost us. Yeah, the girl runs like a deer. She's gone. Gone. And all I have is this little glass slipper which she lost in her flight. Oh, well, maybe it's all for the best. Fate, perhaps. Destiny that is notably on the side of kings. All for the best. No, no, I will not accept it. She is real. I held her in my arms. Tis no dream. And I... But where shall I seek? Where did you come from? Where did you go? There are so many things I'd like to know Just like a dream that fades with the dawn Suddenly you came to me Then you were gone Your tiny slipper is all I possess All that reminds me of your loveliness Adorable, so adorable Sheerest of dearest of charms, adorable. It's deplorable. You're not here snuggling near in my arms. The smiles that crinkle your pert little nose, the laughter a twinkle that your eyes disclose. Adorable, so adorable. Day by day, more and more, you will find I adore you. Adorable, so adorable. Ah, it is true, 
love the lad has for the maid. Yeah, it brings back my youth. It's a rare and malignant disease that unsettles the mind and destroys the conscience. It's bad enough in peasants, but fatal in a prince. I must find her. Yes, you must, or you'll eat like a bird and fall away to skin and bones like the prime minister. Heaven forbid. Then summon the herald and proclaim my royal command throughout the kingdom. Give him this glass slipper and summon forth all the women of the realm until he finds the tiny foot that fits this slipper. Then let her be brought back in the royal coach, accompanied by a troop of knights before and behind. But, 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 but that is a ceremony for royalty, sire. It is. For when she is found, she will be my princess. Oh, my feet hurt. I don't know why they should. Nobody asked you to dance. Look at Cinderella talking to herself in the middle of the room. Oh, not a thing done. The glass not swept from the floor. Lazy, evil, good for nothing. No, no, stepmother. Don't strike me again. Don't you... Don't you dare. What's that? Oh, you dare answer my mother back. Such impudence. I'll show her. Oh, oh, don't. <laughs> what is that? Here he is. It's the Princess Harold. Oh, it's something terribly important must be happening. Open the door, Cinderella, quickly. We must know what this means. Oh, stepmother, it can have nothing to do with us. Open the door. Hear ye, women of the realm. It is commanded that you women present yourselves at once. And the girl whose foot fits this tiny glass slipper shall be taken forthwith to the palace of the prince where riches and happiness await her forever and a day. I have spoken. Quickly, you fools. The girl who put fits that slipper will be the princess. Get your shoes off at once. You have heard the proclamation. Present your feet with it. Yes, sir. Oh, what a tiny, tiny little slipper. Oh, you need not worry, dame. Your feet match your face. I can see at a glance that none of you need bother. I will try on the slipper. Oh, that's your right. Heaven help me. Do so. I will. What with that great flat foot away? I'll put you under arrest. I am small. My foot will fit it. Well, hold it forth. Zounds, you're as bad as your sister. That foot will never fit. Yes, it will. It will. A little more pressure. Stop. <clears throat> Would you break the glass slipper, wench? Oh, I think it fits. Stand up and push down. Enough. You've got a foot like a man. Hold. Yonder girl by the fire. Mm, a pretty one, by my word. Uh, you, lass. Me, sir? Uh, you. What's your name? My name is Cinderella. Oh, it is, eh? Well, try this on for size. But, sir, I... I'll do as you're told. The prince commands it. Very well, sir. I will try. Here, I'll hold the slipper. Now, you slip in your toe, and if it fits, it fits. <laughs> Please, stepmother, I wouldn't dare do this if he hadn't commanded. Don't worry. If he wants to waste his time, it's all right with us. Now, poise your toe, girl, and place it in the slipper. By the kingdom, it fits. Go! Bring the cloak. Summon the knights. The lost princess has been found. I, I beg your pardon. Her Highness, it, it's Cinderella. Ah, a ragged little beggar. Cad, could she be the glittering princess of yester eve? It is she. Cinderella, it's you at last. I have no words, nor clothes to hide my shame, Royal Highness. I find it not even in my heart to beg your mercy. My darling, I would come to you, though the moat between us be wider than the sea, though twenty dragons breathing fire guard your tower. Though I am but a drudge who must huddle by the fire. Though you are the lowliest pauper in the kingdom. That you swear? That I swear. Oh, my prince, my prince. This is the gossamer scuff of which dreams are woven. This is the land that lies in the white clouds above the spring. This is the magical kingdom of dreams. This is the land of the heart where one is allowed to hold close to love never realized. But we shall live forever in that world. You and I, my princess Cinderella. You and I, dear prince. Day by day more and more you will find I adore. Adorable, so adorable. 
And so they lived happy ever after. You have just heard Helen Hayes and Alfred Drake in Cinderella. The music was composed and conducted by Vladimir Zelensky. Next week, Helen Hayes will present the exciting melodrama Kind Lady, and appearing with her will be the Broadway actor-producer Jose Ferrer. Meanwhile, be sure to watch your newspapers for advertisements of Textron products being featured by stores in your community. Always look for the Textron label, your assurance of strength and beauty blended like music, every step of the way from the raw fiber to the finished Textron masterpiece. This is Frank Gallup.